name is Maham and I crochet cute things. Please don't skip the intro of this video because I'm going to go over all the materials that you need. I also have a bunch of cute things to show you guys, so definitely stick around for that. As with most of my tutorials and patterns, you can use any yarn and hook size. However, if you want to use the same yarn and hook size that I did, here's what they are. For the crochet bow bag, I used fluffy yarn. You can make this with regular yarn. You can use any yarn and hook size, but I would recommend using something in between a four to five millimeter hook. Anything smaller than that would make your stitches too small. It would take you ages to complete. Anything larger than that would make your piece very chunky. And unless that's the look you're going for, then I don't recommend using it. I also used a bunch of trinkets and accessories to make the pieces that I'll make today even cuter. So if you're looking for affordable crafting items and a bunch of other cute things, I'd love to introduce you to today's sponsor, which is Timu, an online marketplace which offers very affordable products in so many categories, such as room decor, jewelry, crafting supplies, clothing, accessories, and lots more. Here's a haul of all the amazing things that I found on Timu, starting off with this really, really cute bunny sweater. It's such good quality. I'm literally gonna be wearing this all winter. The best part is that Timu is having a massive site-wide sale with savings up to 90% off and you get free shipping and free returns for up to 90 days. Starting off with the satin ribbons that I'm going to be using for my bow bag. These are so soft and silky and shiny. I absolutely love them. Look at this super amazing yarn that I found. It has sequins on it. It's so unique. It has this beautiful shine to it. And then I got a bunch of smaller crafting supplies as well. These are so cute and perfect for decorating my crochet pieces. This has to be my favorite thing I've ever gotten. Look at these cute little cats. Look how cute they are. I also found the cutest beads and I got them in a bunch of different colors to make bracelets and keychains. These are the prettiest things I've ever seen and they're such good value too. I'm definitely gonna be getting so many more colors. Oh my goodness. It's very well crafted. I'm so amazed. I was thinking of filling this with little crochet plants. I think that would be so cute. It also came with things to hang it up. You can download the Timu app through my link and type my code in the search bar to get an extra 30% off of your first purchase on the app. I highly recommend downloading the app. There are so many amazing, cute, and affordable things to find. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the products that I've shown in this video, the links will be in the description. Happy shopping and happy crochet! Written patterns will be on my blog, so you can always refer to those after you've watched the demonstration so you don't have to keep re-watching the video again and again. This is probably my favorite project from the whole video. We're going to be making a crochet bag out of this gorgeous satin ribbon from Timu. I'm using a 10 millimeter hook. We're going to go ahead and make a slip knot. So when you're working with a thick ribbon, just fold it so that it's easier for you to get started. It's going to be a bit tricky to get started with, especially if you've never worked with something this thick before. I know I haven't and I was struggling. Now go ahead and chain whatever width you want for your bag. I have a few tips for you guys when you're chaining. The first one is pretty hard to get through, but when you're working, make sure that your ribbon is turned to the glossy side and when you're holding on to it, just twist it like that. Grab your hook and pull it through. If it's too tight, then all you have to do is pull your hook a little bit to make the chain looser, then grab onto the yarn and slide it through. So that should be much easier. So pull on your hook to make the chain looser. If your hook isn't going through, then it should be much easier to slide it through. Now go ahead and chain whatever width you want for the bag. I did a total of 14 chains. Now we're going to start our first row. So you're going to skip the first chain that's closest to your hook. So skip this one and insert your hook into the second chain. This bag is made out of single crochet. So we're going to do our first single crochet. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through both the loops on your hook, making your first single crochet. Now go ahead and insert your hook into every chain and do one single crochet in each chain. So just like regular crochet, the only difference is that you're working with a thick ribbon. This is too tight, I'm just gonna pull it a little bit looser and then it's gonna be much easier for me to slide my hook through. Don't worry about these holes. However, if your holes are way too big, then that means that your chains are too loose and you should probably redo them a little bit tighter. 
Now we've got our last chain and in this last chain we're going to be doing three single crochets but please pay attention to how I change how I'm holding my hook. So for the first single crochet I'm just going to insert it like normal. And now I'm going to hold my work this way. I'm going to insert my second single crochet and I'm also going to try to work over this end over here. And now we have to do our last third single crochet. So we're going to turn our work this way. So now we're going to be working into the backs of the chains. So we're not going to be working on top. We're going to be working in the back so we can start working in rounds. So let's do our third single crochet. And remember, all of these single crochets are going in that same last chain. So last one in that same chain, but this time you're holding your work the other way. All right, so now you've got three single crochets in your last chain. So go ahead and insert your hook into the backs of the chains over here. And then a single crochet like normal. So now you're just going to do one single crochet in the backs of every chain. So that's one, go into the back of the next chain. And single crochet. I was wondering why nobody had made a tutorial for this yet, and I can see why, because just struggling on camera is kind of humiliating for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to single crochet into the backs of every chain, and I'm just, I'm not inserting my hook through here anymore because I noticed that it was giving me really large holes. So what I'm doing is I'm just going through the back loops, so not both of them, just the back loops, one, two, three. I'm just going to go through only the backs of them, and then single crochet. And these are a bit tricky to get through because they're super tight, but this gives me less holes. I just use my fingers to slide it through and then I single crochet. And then when I stretch it out, I don't have like a big hole. This part just covers it. So if you feel like you're getting really big holes when you go through the center of the stitch, like I showed you before, then this is another way to do it. We've reached this last chain over here and we're going to do two single crochets into this last chain space. So in the same chain space, you're going to be inserting two single crochets. All right, so that's one. And now we have to do one more in that same space, but turn your work this way. And now go ahead and get some stitch markers or any kind of markers that you like using. I got these really cute heart-shaped stitch markers from Timu as well. And don't forget that you can use my code for a 30% extra discount off your first purchase on the app. So I'm going to be using the marker to just mark the stitch that we just did. So now I know that this is where my round ends and now I can start my next round. From now on, you just have to do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around until you have the size that you want for the bag. So here's how this is going to work. You're going to insert your hook into the stitch like you would for a normal single crochet stitch. Just single crochet. Go ahead and do one single crochet into each of these stitches. Go ahead and do one single crochet into each of these stitches until you come to the end of this side. And then I know you just have to do one single crochet in every stitch, but if you're still confused, I'm going to show you how to continue. Now I've reached the corner over here. There's nothing different. I just wanted to work with you guys, but you're basically just going to do one single crochet in every stitch until you reach where your stitch marker is. Again, if your single crochets are hard to get through, just use your hook to make it longer and it would be much easier to slide it through. Make sure that you don't miss a stitch, otherwise your bag will get smaller and smaller. Also make sure that you pull this up, making it a little bit looser so that it's easier for you to slide your hook through when you're making your single crochet. Now look, I was doing single crochets all the way here. Now I'm going to be working on this side. So same thing, just one single crochet in every stitch. 
I went all the way around and now have reached my stitch marker. So that is your first round. So we had the chains that you started off with and you did your first round. So the stitch marker is there to help you keep track of your rounds. Now we're going to start our second round. And from now on, you just have to do one single crochet in every stitch round and round and round no other steps and your bag's just going to automatically get longer so do as many rounds as you want until your bag is the size that you want it to be i would recommend keeping track of how many rows you're doing so to do that just do a single crochet into the stitch that had your stitch marker and then just place your stitch marker back through so every time you reach back to your stitch marker, you know that you finished a round. This is how much I got done with one ball of ribbon. As you can see, I only did one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. So now I've reached the part where I need to start using the new ribbon that I've attached. So you just insert your hook like normal and you pull up a loop. Then I'm just gonna pull the knot through so that it comes to the back part. And then I'm just going to single crochet like normal. And that's basically it. Now I'm just going to single crochet into the other stitches. And that's what it looks like from the front. I have this thing coming through. You can just take your hook and you can just tuck this inside because there are holes in your work. So you can just tuck it inside to hide it on the inner part of your bag. And yeah, that's it. Now you've got a new ball of yarn, ball of ribbon that you can just continue going round and round and round. I did a total of around nine rounds. And when you come back to where your stitch marker is after having the size that you want, we're going to slip stitch into the stitch where your stitch marker is. Go into that stitch and just slip stitch. And now we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch as well. And now you're going to be ready to start the strap. For the strap, I just want it to be a chain. I think that looks really cute. I did try it before showing you this step. After doing your two slip stitches, just make sure that your hook is at one corner of your bag. And now we can start chaining. I'm going to chain 30 chains to make my strap. Try to make these as even as you can. You can make the strap as long as you want. Once you're done with your chains, make sure that they are facing the right way. So just make sure that they're not twisting or anything. And now we're going to slip stitch it into the corner. So just insert your hook through the corner stitch and slip stitch. This is gonna be a little bit tight. So just pull it through. And there you've got your strap. What I'm going to do next, just like an added little detail, I'm going to slip stitch into every stitch all the way across. This is because I want to make the top of the bag a little bit smaller than what I have right now. So I'm just going to slip stitch all the way across. This is an optional step. You don't have to do this. Just inserting my hook and slip stitching. I think these slip stitches across the top just add a really nice finishing to your work. So in comparison, this is the side with the slip stitches and this is the side without. So I highly recommend doing these around the edge. Once again, you just have to do one slip stitch in every stitch. I was playing yarn chicken with the ribbon and I lost I literally only have like four more stitches to slip stitch in but I don't have enough ribbon and I don't want to tie any more just for four stitches I'll just make this the back of my bag but once you're done you're just going to pull through and tighten your ribbon and with this end that you have over here you can just weave it into the back you can hide it I'm just gonna take my hook Pull it through so I can move this to the back side of my work. Now you can go ahead and decorate your bag with some ribbons. The bow is made out of two pieces. We've got the middle piece and then we've got the tails. We're going to start off by making the middle piece. Go ahead and make a slip knot. 
and then you're going to chain 25. Make sure you keep count. Now we're going to skip that first chain and work into the second chain. You're going to insert one single crochet. Remember that I have the written pattern on my blog so that you don't have to keep re-watching the video. Once you understand how the pattern works, you can just refer it to the written pattern. And you're going to do two half double crochets, one in each stitch. So in the next chain, we've got one half double crochet and in the next chain, another half double crochet. Now we're going to do two double crochets. So in the next chain, one. And in the next chain, two. Next, we're going to do three triple crochets, one in each chain. For a triple crochet, you have to yarn over twice, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. We've got to do one more. We're going to do two double crochets, one in each chain. So all the stitches that I'm saying, they go one in each chain. So you don't do two in the same chain. You do one in each chain. Now we're going to do two half double crochets. Now we're going to do two slip stitches. So go into the next chain, that's one, and in the next chain, two. Now we're going to repeat the same thing that we did on this side onto the other side. So we're gonna do two half double crochets. Two double crochets. two triple crochets, two double crochets again, two half double crochets, once you're done with your last half double crochet you should have one stitch left in this last stitch, we're going to do three single crochets, but please pay attention to how I move my work because we're going to work on the other side. Insert your first single crochet, and then hold on to your work this way. Insert your second single crochet, and then hold on to your work this way, and insert your third single crochet in the same chain. Now we're going to be working into the backs of the chains following the same exact pattern. So two half double crochets, two double crochets, two triple crochets, the same thing we did before. I just wanna show you where I'm inserting my hook a little bit more clearly, yarn over it and go through this back part of the chain. Use your fingers to help you. Push through and do your stitch. Now I'm going to do my double crochet, work into the backs of the chains. Make sure that you're not accidentally skipping any. Now I'm doing my two triple crochets. Go ahead and repeat the same pattern. The only difference is that you're working into the backs of the chains. After my two triples, I did two doubles and I'm just finishing up my two half doubles. Now we're going to do two slip stitches. So see how the stitches that you're working over here are parallel to the ones that you did at the bottom. That's how you know that you're on the right track. So go into the backs of the chains, do two slip stitches. Now go ahead and repeat the same pattern on this side. I've completed to my two half double crochets and you should have just one little chain left. Over here we're going to do two single crochets, one and in that same chain two, and now you can end your work. So you're just going to slip stitch into that first stitch that we did at the beginning, insert your hook into it, and slip stitch. Now you're ready to fasten off. 
Remember that you need a plastic needle to do a little bit of sewing to put the bow together. So what we're going to do is leave a pretty long tail before you cut your yarn. So make sure you've left um, something that's approximately that big. Pull and tighten. Now you've got your first piece. We're going to be following very similar steps for the next piece, the tails. You're going to go ahead and make a slip knot. And now you're going to chain 15. Once you've got 15 chains, we have another pattern to follow. Each of these stitches goes one in each chain. So we're going to start off by skipping the first chain and we're going to work into our second chain doing one single crochet. Next, we're going to do one half double crochet. Remember, these stitches go one in each chain. And then a double crochet, triple crochet, double crochet again, half double crochet, single crochet. Now we're going to do a slip stitch in the next chain. That's where you're going to have so far. Now we're going to do a half double crochet, double, triple, double, half double, and single. Now we've finished. Once you're done, you can just slip stitch. I'm just going to slip stitch back to where I did my single crochet. And then I can just fasten off. So I just chained one and I'm going to cut my yarn. And just end my work like that. Now to join the two pieces together, go ahead and get your plastic needles. If you can't find these in your local craft stores, then I have these linked on my Amazon storefront. You can purchase them from there. Oops, I just broke it. I got a new needle. <laughs> so this is the right side, this is the wrong side. You're going to turn it to the wrong side and insert your needle through the middle. And as you pull, oops, this is going to come like that. So just come back up. Go through another part of the piece. This is why I don't show sewing parts on my channel. I just don't know what words to use to describe what I'm doing, but hopefully the demonstration's enough. All right, now we've got it a little bit more securely fastened. Now we're going to repeat this onto the other side. So just insert your hook through the edge of the other piece. And as you pull, you're gonna notice that it's gonna attach itself over there. Now we're just going to do one more stitch just to secure it even more. And there we go, we've got our first little step all done. Now we're going to take this and we're just going to hold on to it, making sure that it's lined up. You're going to take your yarn and you're going to wrap it around. In your first wrap, make sure that you make it super tight. And then just adjust this because it would be hard to adjust it later. So try to adjust it now. Then go ahead and just wrap this around and around and around really tightly. And then to end it, I don't have much yarn left. I really should have taken more. But to end it, you just go through any of these back loop kind of things. And you have to slide this through itself. To make like a knot so I'm just gonna uh, try to okay got it and you pull and there you go you should be all done I'm just gonna make this super tight you can do double knot to secure it even more because I don't think that's tight enough but go ahead and secure it you can weave in your ends hide them and you're all done with your bow now I'm going to be using this heart clasp that I got from Timo and turning it into a keychain. You can find lots of key rings and keychains on the app. And there's my adorable little keychain. For the card holder, keep the cards that you're going to be putting inside the card holder at hand so we can make sure that it's the right size. 
you're gonna go ahead and make a slip knot. This pattern is very simple, made up of only single crochets, just rows of them. So even if you're a beginner, you will be able to do this. Go ahead and chain the width that you want for your card holder. Now the width is going to be this measurement, the horizontal measurement, and the length will be the vertical measurement. This is the width that I have. As you can see, I have one or two chains slightly larger than the card at hand. This is because rows of single crochet will increase, so it will become a little bit larger than the chains that you have. Now we're going to skip the first chain and insert a single crochet starting from the second chain. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through two. Now go ahead and do one single crochet in every chain until you reach your last chain. Now we're going to start our second row. So usually you would chain one and then turn your work and then single crochet into the first stitch. But if you want slightly neater edges, here's what I like to do. You don't have to do this, you could do it the regular way. But I don't chain one, I just turn my work and I insert the first single crochet into the first stitch. And then continue my row like normal doing one single crochet in every stitch. And that's how I'm going to do all of my rows. And then you're going to keep crocheting rows of single crochet until the length is the same as your card. When you reach the end of the second row, repeat the same steps, so just turn your work start your next row by inserting a single crochet into the first stitch and then single crochet into every stitch all the way down the row. When you've finished your first piece you can fasten off and when you're fastening off you just have to chain one, cut your yarn and pull it and that's how you would end your work. After making the first piece this next piece has two more rows than the first one so it has this little space over here and now I did my third piece following the same steps and it has two more rows than the second piece. So when I put them together it has sort of like this step. I'm using one of my card holders for reference for the sizes. Now don't fasten off when you're done with the third one because we're just going to directly start joining our pieces. Before we start joining just make sure that you do two single crochets in the last stitch just to help us turn our work this way. Now go ahead and get some stitch markers. To use the stitch markers to line up our work so we can make sure that when we're joining it, we're joining it at the right place. So first I'm going to join this side together. So take the corner and put it in the corresponding little section over there. And then I'm going to do the same for the next piece. So I've placed three stitch markers. So I've got two rows, two rows, and then I've just got the front piece. We're going to single crochet the sides together. You can also slip stitch. So go ahead and insert your hook as close to the edge as you can and single crochet. Now I've reached my first stitch marker, so I'm going to insert my hook where my stitch marker is. Then go ahead and single crochet to join. The stitch markers are really useful in helping you make sure that you don't make your stitches wonky. So when you're inserting your hook, you have to make sure that you're inserting it through both the pieces as close to the edge as possible. There's no specific place to insert your hook, just as close to the edge as you possibly can get. Now I've reached my third stitch marker and now I'll be joining all three pieces together. Insert my hook through the first piece, then the second piece and the third, making sure that I got all three of them and then pulling up a loop. This might be a little bit tricky, then single crochet. And now I'm just going to continue downwards. So you always have to make sure that you're grabbing onto all three pieces as you're working. Go ahead and single crochet all the way down. I finished this side and now I'm going to be joining the bottom together. So just in that last place, you got to make sure that you go through all three of them. Do two single crochets in the corner to help you make a little corner on the side. And now you can just single crochet all three pieces together. So I'm going to go through 
all three of them and single crochet. Please make sure that you're lining them up because we don't want one of the pieces to become too short and the other one to become too long. So make sure you have stitch markers and you're using them to keep your work lined up. Go ahead and single crochet this side together and all the way up here. When you reach your corner, do two single crochets and then do one single crochet all the way across. Once you're at the end, we're just going to do one more single crochet to end our work. In the corner. And there we go, you're all finished. Now to fasten your work off, you're just going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And now you can chain one your scissor and cut. I do want to weave this in later so I cut a little bit of a long end and you're all finished. I'm going to hide the ends in but that's basically what your card holder should look like. To make the bow for the card holder we're going to be following the same steps but doing less number of stitches so that our bow is smaller. We're going to start by making a slip knot and then you're going to chain 18. I think I said the wrong thing, but you're supposed to chain 17, not 18. Now we're going to skip the first chain and start working from the second chain. All of the stitches are one in each chain, so we're going to start off by doing one single crochet. Now we have to do two half double crochets, so yarn over, go into the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and one more half double crochet into the next chain. Now we're going to do two double crochets, one in each chain. So in the next chain we're doing one double crochet, and in the next chain we're doing another double crochet. Two half double crochets, in the next chain one. We're working one stitch in one chain, and another half double crochet in the next chain. Now we have to do two slip stitches, so we're going to do one and two in the next chain. Now let's repeat the same thing we did on this side one more time. So we're going to do two half double crochets, then we're going to do two double crochets, two half double crochets, and then you should have one stitch remaining after completing your half double crochets, which we're going to single crochet. Now we have to do three single crochets in this last chain. We've already got our first one. Pay attention to how I'm holding my work. We're going to do our second in that same chain and we're gonna turn our work this way and we're gonna do our third in the same chain. Now we're going to be working on the other side. So we're gonna be working into the backs of these chains. Let's repeat the pattern. The only difference is that we're working into the backs of the chains. Let's do two half double crochets. So you just have to insert it into the corresponding stitch. Now we're going to do two double crochets. Two half double crochets. Now we're going to do two slip stitches, two half double crochets, two double crochets. This is very, very repetitive. Two half double crochets again. And now we're just going to do two single crochets in this last chain. So one and in that same chain, two. And now we're going to end this piece, so we're going to go into our first stitch over there and slip stitch. Now we're ready to fasten off, so I'm going to chain one. I'm going to cut a long tail because we're going to be using it to tie the center of the bow as well. And pull to tighten. Now we've got our first piece. For the next piece of the bow, you're going to make a slip knot and then chain 11. We're going to skip the first chain and single crochet into the second chain. 
Now follow the pattern and insert one stitch into every chain as the pattern says. Next we have to do a half double crochet and then a double crochet. Go ahead and insert the rest of the stitches into the chains and you're done. Now we're just going to slip stitch into that same stitch, the last chain, chain one, and now we're ready to fasten off. You don't have to leave a long tail because we won't need it, but you can if you're going to be weaving in your ends. Now we've got our two pieces and we're going to sew them together. I've attached a plastic needle to my work. Now this is the front side of your work and this is the back side. Turn your work to the back side and insert your needle through the center. Pull, oops, pull, 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 and it's going to pull your bow inwards. Now we're going to just secure this in place. I'm going to go through the center of the bow and the back of the bow again just to secure it even more in place. Now let's get the other end. You're facing the back of your work and insert your needle through the other side and just pull it and bring it to the center. Now we're going to secure it in place again. So I'm gonna go through the next stitch and attach it to the center. I'm just gonna hide this end over there. And there you've made the top part of your bow. Now we're gonna take this piece over here and we're gonna hold on to it, making sure that the center is aligned. Then you're gonna start wrapping your bow all around. So you've got your piece, just keep make sure that it's centered and then wrap your yarn tightly around your bow. Once you're happy, you're just going to turn your work to the back and we're going to make a knot into any one of the loops. So insert your needle through and back and tighten this into a knot. And that's what your bow will look like. Now you can take your bow and you can sew it onto your card holder or you can glue it. I'm gonna be gluing it. For the fluffy bow bag, you can, of course, use any kind of yarn that you want, but I would recommend that you have a stitch marker at hand so that you can keep track of the rounds that you're going to be working. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook. You can adjust the hook size depending on what kind of yarn you're using. Go ahead and make a slip knot. And now chain the width that you want for your bag. This can be as wide as you want it to be, so more chains to make it wider, less chains to make it well, less wide. Once you're done, we're going to start making our first row. Skip the first chain and insert your hook into the second chain. We're going to be doing half double crochets so that this bag is quick and easy to work up. You can use single crochets or even double crochets. It's completely up to you. This pattern is super customizable. Now I'm just going to take a stitch marker and mark this first stitch that I did just so I can keep track of where the end of my row is. Now go ahead and insert one half double crochet into every chain. To half double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into the chain, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops that are on your hook. Go ahead and do this all the way until you reach your last chain. Once you reach your last chain, in this last chain we're going to do three half double crochets. So let's do our first half double crochet and then I want you to pay attention to how I'm holding my work. To do our second half double crochet, we're going to turn our work this way and then you're going to insert your half double crochet in that same last chain. Now when we're doing our last half double crochet, you're going to turn your work this way so that the backs of your chains are facing upwards or facing you. Go ahead and do your last half double crochet in that same chain. So now we've got three half double crochets in that last chain. Now go ahead and do one half double crochet into the backs of these chains. So yarn over, insert your hook into the backs of the chains. These are usually going to be these loops over here and you can also work over your end and half double crochet. Now before we move on, I recommend that you take another stitch marker and just mark this first half double crochet that you did. 
that you know that this is where you're starting. Go ahead and just do one half double crochet in every chain. I'm just doing one half double crochet in the backs of these chains. Now I've reached my last chain over here, so this last chain should be the one that has the stitch where your stitch marker is. In this last one, we're going to do two half double crochets, so one, and in that same chain, another half double crochet. And now we've completed our first round. From now on, we're just going to be doing one half double crochet in every stitch all the way around and around. We're going to make sure that our stitch marker is always in the first stitch that we do. I'm going to insert my hook into this first stitch, making a half double crochet, and this is my first half double crochet of round two. So I'm just going to mark it with a stitch marker so I can keep track of when my round finishes and when I start a new one. Now just go ahead and insert one half double crochet into every stitch all the way around until you reach your next stitch marker. I've reached my next stitch marker. I'm just going to remove it. I don't need it anymore. You only just need one stitch marker at the end so you can keep track of your rows. That one was just there to help me know when I come back around. And now you're just going to do one half double crochet in every stitch all the way around until you reach your stitch marker again. So you're just doing one half double crochet in every stitch. If you notice that the body of your bag is getting much smaller or getting much larger, then that means that you're accidentally inserting more than one half double crochet in each stitch. You have to make sure that you're only doing one half double crochet in every stitch. I've reached the end of my second round. So I'm gonna start my third round. That's my first half double crochet. So I'm just going to place my stitch marker back and this is going to help me keep track of when I finish my rounds. And that's it. Now go ahead and keep crocheting rounds of one half double crochet in every stitch until the body of your bag is the size that you want it to be. As long as you do just one half double crochet in every stitch, the body of your bag will increase by itself. Once you have the size that you want for the body of the bag, just stop half double crocheting at one corner. So just make sure that you're at the corner of your work because now we're going to make the straps. To make the straps, we're first going to chain the length that you want. So go ahead and chain any number of chains until you have the length that you want for the strap. I did 55 chains and then you're just going to slip stitch into the corner of the other side. So line it up, go into the stitch and slip stitch to attach the strap onto the body of the bag. Now we're going to make the strap thicker by doing one round of half double crochets. After you slip stitch and attach the strap, slip stitch into the next stitch. And now we're going to make the strap thicker by doing one half double crochet into every chain. So go ahead and start from the first chain one half double crochet and then go ahead and do one half double crochet in every chain and your strap is going to get thicker. After you've half double crocheted into every chain and you come onto the other side, you're going to have this half double crochet stitch from your previous round. We're going to half double crochet into the side of it as well. So insert your hook into the stitch, half double crochet, and now we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And we're all done with the strap. Now we're going to start making the flap. To make the flap, we're only going to be working in rows. So we're gonna half double crochet into every stitch till the end and then keep doing rows of half double crochet. So let's get started. Go ahead and do one half double crochet into every stitch until you reach the other corner of your bag. After you've half double crocheted till the end, we're going to start a new row. So to do this, just turn your work this way half double crochet into that first stitch. And now just half double crochet in every stitch until you reach the next corner. So you're going to half double crochet in every stitch until you reach back here, turn your work and do another row. I'm done with another row, so to start my next row, I'm just going to turn my work. I'm going to half double crochet into the first stitch, 
So your first stitch might get covered by the yarn because you're holding it like this, but don't forget about it. Just squeeze your hook through. And now go ahead and half double crochet into every stitch until the end of this row. Continue making rows until your flap is as long as you want it to be. Once the flap is as long as you want it to be, we're just going to fasten off. So simply chain two, get your scissor and cut, pull and tighten. And now you can weave this end in to hide it at the back. To make the bow, we're going to be doing foundation double crochets. And foundation double crochets are so good for projects where you have to start off with a long number of chains. So I highly recommend learning this technique because you can use it to make starting your projects much easier. Go ahead and start off with a regular slip knot and then you're going to chain two. After that, we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into the second chain. Then you're going to pull through one loop. Then you're gonna have three loops left on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two of them and then yarn over and pull through the last two, making a double crochet. This is your double crochet, and at the bottom of it, you'll have a stitch over here. From now on, we're going to be working into the bottom stitches that are formed. So yarn over, insert your hook through that bottom stitch, make sure you get both of the loops, and then double crochet like normal. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is your second double crochet. Let's do one more. Yarn over, go through the bottom stitch, making sure that you get both of the loops of the stitch. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So look, we've got three double crochets already. Let's do this one more time. These are the tops of your stitches, and at the bottom, you're gonna see the bottom of your stitches. When you yarn over it, you have to go through the bottom stitches like that. And then you can just do a regular double crochet. Now go ahead and do at least 40 to 60 foundation double crochets. And then we're gonna turn this long chain of double crochets into a bow. If the foundation double crochets are too tricky for you, then you can make a slip knot, make a regular length of 40 to 60 chains, and then do one double crochet in each of those chains. The results are going to be the same. However, the foundation double crochet technique is much faster. But if you're not able to get the hang of it, don't worry, you can also just make a chain of double crochets the normal way. I did around 52 chains and now I'm ready to fasten off. So I'm just going to insert my hook without yarning over into the bottom stitch and slip stitch. Chain one, and now I'm just gonna cut my yarn. And now we're going to turn this long double crochet into a bow. Turn your piece to the back side and then cross over your pieces like this. And now when we join it together, it's going to make a bow. Now we're going to take a yarn and wrap it around the middle to make the center of the bow. But I'm also going to be adding this really pretty heart locket. I got this from Timu. And as a reminder, you can use my link to download the app and get an extra 30% off when you use my code off your first purchase from Timu. So just ignore this step if you're not adding anything. I'm just going to put my heart locket through. And then I'm going to hold on to this at the back. And now you're just going to wrap this around and around and around. And that's it, you have your bow. And we are going to tie it off at the back. You can adjust it so you can pull the side or pull the other side to make your bow look better if it's not turning out how you want. Now to tie your work off, you're just going to cut your yarn, get your hook, slide it through any of the loops that you can get it through, pull the end that you just cut through, and then you're going to make a little loop like that and slide this through.
and pull to tighten it. And then just adjust your bow. This next part is an optional step where I'm going to be slip stitching all across the flap to make a little border. Go ahead and insert your hook into the corner of the flap. Pull your yarn through. Tie a knot to secure it in place. You can also double knot it to make it extra secure. Insert your hook back through that same place and pull up a loop and then chain one. Now we're just going to slip stitch all across the edge. Insert your hook as close to the edge as you can and slip stitch. Go ahead and do this all around the flap. Make sure that your slip stitches are not too tight so always pull your hook a little bit once you're done with your slip stitch. If these stitches are too tight then the flap will basically bunch up and not give you the best look. You're going to slip stitch all around into these stitches as well until you come back to the other side. When you reach this top part, you're just going to insert your hook into the stitches and slip stitch. Once you reach the other side, we're just going to fasten off. I usually just like to chain one or two and I cut my yarn, pull, tighten, and then I will hide this end in just probably on the back of my bag. Like I've hidden this one, I just weave it in through and then cut the rest of it. Once you're done, you can sew on your bow and that's your bag all complete. Now I'm not adding any sort of closure because I have this locket that's pretty heavy. So I just use the heaviness of the locket to keep my flap closed. However, if you do want to add a closure, you can find titch buttons and these are buttons that you can sew onto the edges of your flap and they will basically help your bag snap open and shut. And I have shown these in previous videos, but you can find these on Timu as well. And you're all done.